Good morning, YouTube. Today is the 7th of October. And it's the first video I've done in a while. I think it's been probably a month or so. But the truth is, there's been another bereavement in the family. So that's the reason why I've been a bit quiet. But thank you to everybody that messaged me asking if I fell out with the video camera <laughs> uh, or if I was okay. Yes, I'm fine. Just haven't been bothered to film one, to be honest. Uh, but there you go. Today I am doing some different kind of work than usual. From what I can gather, I'm not going to be on the sliders like I usually am. The slider flex trailers. I think I'm going to be on flatbeds today. But I really don't know what's going on at the moment. I've been given some paperwork and I've been told to get the people to unload the trailer next door to our yard and then park that one up and then pick up another trailer that somebody else has left and get that one unloaded and I don't know what comes after that so that's what we're going to start with today so I've just done my walk around check uh, it's 6.19 I'm ready to go and find out what's on this trailer let's go It seems today uh, I'm just moving trailers backwards and forwards from Dudley to Willinor, so that suits me just fine. I've so far this morning tipped the first flatbed that was parked there, and, and then I had to move that trailer out, park it up, then I had to couple up to another trailer on the yard, reverse that into the place which you saw me do, that was unloaded and then I had to bring that trailer to here now in Dudley and I've picked up another flatbed with the same kind of stuff on it that I'm going to take back again to the same place so I'm backwards and forwards today and then next to me this side is a slider trailer which I've got to take with me as well so once I've got this one delivered I'm coming back and then taking that one so yeah backwards and forwards today but that's no trouble with me I like the local work as we know. So yeah, let's get that over there and uh, probably take my break while I'm there too. See you in a bit. <coughs> well there's already a lorry in so I've got to wait for that one to come out before I can reverse in there. So far so good today. The time now is 10 o'clock um, and yeah I think I'll probably take my 15 here actually um, in the time I'm waiting for this person and then I can uh, reverse in. The thing with these flatbeds is whenever we pick them up 
we don't keep the straps on the flatbed trailers so we have them in our tractor units so whenever you pick up a flatbed you have to use your own straps to strap it and if you leave it somewhere you have to take your straps off put them back in your truck and then the next driver has to strap the load unless you can arrange with the other driver if you know who is collecting it to give you your straps back otherwise that's the way we do it so strap these up and thanks to one of our shunters I now know how to tie the ratchet straps up the excess part in a more neat fashion so before I didn't know how to do it now I do maybe I can save that for a video tutorial another time I also have finally got a microwave fitted in my cab now Cuda Automotive who gave me a free voucher to give to one of you guys some time ago now sent me this microwave months ago before I'd even passed my class one test and they asked me to do a review on it and I said yeah of course I will but there's going to be a bit of a wait because I've not passed my test yet and I don't have a tractor unit and as you guys know I failed my first test so that was a bit of a delay I finally got my retest and passed and then I had to wait about three or four weeks before I actually started driving the Arctics and then as you know every truck I had broke down and whatever so now I finally got this one back that seems to be holding up at the moment now was the right time so a big thank you to Cuda Automotive as always check them out in the link in the description but they sent me a microwave for me to review which I'm going to do its own video review uh, soon I am going to take you a photo because I'm not sure if you can see it from where you are right now so the mechanics have fitted this for me as a temporary measure because of course maybe they don't trust this truck so much either <laughs> but just in case I ever need to change trucks I can take it with me so they've done it temporarily and they put it there because I'm a day worker I don't need my cab bed only I suppose if I got stranded somewhere and had to do a night out which hasn't happened yet so uh, that's pretty cool I've got my fridge so I've been told to get some pies and pasties so uh, next time I break down I can feed the mechanics so a shout out to the mechanics who have asked for a shout out <laughs> for doing their uh, for doing that for me so shout out to chief mechanic Dave and shout out to Daz for fitting the microwave for me uh, I appreciate it <coughs> anyway Someone left a comment in my last video that said that I hadn't mentioned reversing. It's the first video that I did without mentioning reversing and that that must have been a good sign. Well, yeah, I mean, the truth is I'm getting better at it. I've been on now, oh, I forgot how long. I think I started on the 13th of July and it's now October, so I've been on it for a couple of months now and I'd say probably about a month and a half after being on these full time I started to get the hang of it and started to feel a bit more confident I mean I don't want to say started to get the hang of it because of course I was still reversing into customers doors to unload and things I was managing but now I'd say after a month and a half, I was feeling more comfortable. And now I'm at the stage at, if I can get the reverse on my good side, on this mirror, then I'm pretty happy to attempt it. And I feel like I know how to do it better. Where before I was having a lot of trouble getting the setups right and just making some beginner mistakes, I'd say now I'm feeling a bit more confident with it uh, I'm by by now oh in a minute can't get my words out by all means I'm not perfect of course I'm not I still make my mistakes as we saw this morning I couldn't get it in one shunt because I couldn't catch the trailer quick enough but 
that things like that don't bother me anymore. I've got to that point where I know what I did wrong and I know how to fix it. Where before I didn't know what to do. <laughs> so yeah. Let's have a crack at reversing into here then. The guy told me I could reverse in as soon as he's gone, so that's perfect. Let's give it a go. I still reverse better when I look out the window. I'm not very good with just the mirrors on their own. I'm much better with looking out the window. Let's give it a go, people. gentleman did say to me don't worry about the wood just don't hit the bundles of steel before I was having to steer then look and then so on now I can look as well about there people yeah there is a gap to the bundles the other side but better to be safe, isn't it, really? Um, yeah, I'm just feeling generally more happier with my reversing. Where before, I didn't know how to do it, how to get into the bay, or I didn't know what to do, basically, or how to fix it. And it was so frustrating because I just 
couldn't understand in my head how the trailer moves because they're so strange these arctics compared to the rigids but now i've got my head around it a bit i'm a bit happier you know i'll give anything a go like i just reversed in here with no one watching me i'd have never dreamt of doing that before because you can see there's not much space here i'd have never dreamt of doing that so yeah let's get these straps off and then this gentleman can come and unload when he's ready and then we're off back to Dudley to get the other trailer to bring that back here to do the same thing so there we go I think it's easier as well reversing the flats because you can see it across the trailer so with it being turned at a sharp angle like that you can see across the trailer you can kind of judge better how far or how close you are to something because you can see it better where with the slider or a curtain slider you can only see your side you can't see out across the trailer anyway let's get these straps off i'm now on my way back over to dudley to get the slider trailer and drop this one off over there and i wanted to just thank all of my new subscribers and new people viewing and commenting on the videos I don't know what's happened with the HGV scenario being in the news everything's just exploded and I've suddenly gained such a lot more subscribers and things which is great so like welcome uh, thank you for coming over to my channel and subscribing to me and thank you for all of your comments I'd also like to say a big thank you to all of the people who've been leaving nasty comments on my channel. Uh, that's not something that I've had to deal with really in all of the time that I've been doing my YouTube. I've had predominantly nice comments, not really had any negative ones. Of course, some people are a bit small down below and those people feel like they need to make up for it by being nasty to other people so thank you i hope you feel better about yourself now anyway now that's out of the way i would like to talk about whether you should get your hgv license should you get your class one license now for me if you're new to my channel i started driving the class two trucks two years ago and I've recently in July just started driving the class ones now it's something that I had debated and talked myself out of for the whole two years I was doing the class two job to be honest um, and now I've got my license and I've had a go for the first three weeks definitely the first three weeks was absolute nightmare and I just was struggling big time with the reversing of course everybody struggles with the reversing the going forwards part basically the same you pick it up after a couple of weeks now the, the going forwards part is okay once you learn how the trailer and different trailer lengths cut the corners then you're fine the reversing part and reversing different trailer lengths is a whole different game. For the first three weeks, I was reduced near to tears with it because some days you just can't seem to figure out which way to turn the wheel. Well, I mean, I say that, but turning which way to turn the wheel is something I'd spent a whole two years on class two worrying about. If I ever did my class one license, how will I know which way to turn the wheel? I'll get confused. That's really not the case at all. I'm not confused about which way to turn the wheel. I just don't understand how the arctics work and how they move. And now, a couple of months down the line, I'm feeling a lot more confident with that. And I understand better how these arctics move and I'm coping day to day. But I'd say for those first three weeks, it was just a complete nightmare. And I think it, if getting your class one license is something that you want to do, you need to be prepared to look and feel like the biggest idiot going. 
for at least three weeks, two to three weeks. I don't know. Everybody's different, I suppose. Depends how fast you pick it up. But for me, the first three weeks, I felt and looked like the biggest idiot going. And it, it's such a frustrating feeling when you just don't know how to how to fix it. I know I spoke before about this one delivery I did in Gloucester where you had to reverse back on yourself. I actually took a photo last time I was there of this yard and you have to drive under a canopy and then you have to turn back on yourself to get into the door next to it which all seems a bit overwhelming when you first start because when you're spinning these trucks and you're reversing at such a sharp angle they don't behave like you think that they would or at least that's how I found it it's not doing what I thought it would do it's not moving the way I thought it would so it's all really confusing to begin with which is why I was better with let's say shallow angles angles that aren't so sharp and or a more gentle angle basically a more of a straighter angle was better and the the sharp angles were the ones that I was really struggling with anyway this one at Gloucester was just a complete nightmare and the gentleman who was on the crane he's the one who's like waving me to keep reversing he was losing his temper with me I, I could sense he was losing his temper with me and I was losing my temper as well with him with the truck with everything with myself because I was in that situation where I just didn't know how to get this truck to go into that door I mean in that situation you had to be perfect because there was things either side of the door and there's no room to go to, to go forwards it's just you have to time the steering perfectly when you're straightening up or you're not gonna get in this door anyway I, I just I didn't know what to do I I was in that situation of despair I just didn't know what to do and I even said to the guy I, I don't know what to do I don't know how to make it work I know which way to turn the wheel but I don't know how fast to take the steering away or whatever it was just a nightmare anyway in the end another driver from another company actually sat in my unit and did it for me because even with him telling me I still couldn't do it so yeah I dreaded going back there again and some uh, some weeks later I had mentioned to my manager please don't send me there again because I'm having a meltdown just let me get my head around it first then send me so he sent me probably a month or so later and I went there and I did it first try without going forwards and I looked at the crane operator and he looked at me and he said how did you do that and I said I don't know something just has clicked and I understand it better now anyway I've been there since and it's the same story I look at it now and think well what was I worrying about there is enough space to do the manoeuvre as long as you know how to do it when I went first time I didn't have a clue <laughs> anyway so if you want to do your class one you've got to be prepared to look and feel like a complete idiot for a while because that's how it's gonna be unfortunately and I don't think there's anybody who is born that can just walk straight into it I know someone left a comment that I recently replied to and it said that that person had just gone up to their class one license and thought how hard can it be oh how wrong was I yeah that's that's exactly how it is however good you feel like you are when you have a go it just blows your mind <laughs> anyway so for me I like driving the Arctic I do I'm not one of those people where some people say oh once you're in the Arctic you'll never go back to the rigid you'll never go back to the class 2 I don't feel like that for me it doesn't matter the size of the vehicle that isn't a problem anymore I've got the hang of the Arctic and obviously I can drive the, the rigid the smaller one 
for me it's not the vehicle and I don't have that feeling of I'd never go back to the rigid because that's not true it wouldn't bother me what I drive that's not a problem for me I know some people think that the Arctics are better which that's fine I think they're they're lovely going forwards but going backwards that can be a bit challenging <clears throat> so for me I like driving the Arctic but my whole kind of work has changed so it's different from it's different from the class 2 job I used to be carrying stillages or bins of nuts and bolts and things and pallets and now I'm carrying giant coils of steel or today I'm carrying bars of steel so the whole nature of the work has changed I'm no longer on a curtain sided trailer I predominantly drive slider flex trailers so the ones that you have to slide the roof all the way back so they can unload the coil with a crane where those things are just another game in themselves they they can be a complete nightmare when they get stuck and I'm so used to opening the curtain on the class 2 and the forklift driver unloads the stillages that are on there or the bins and you just wait you sit in the cab and wait now when I'm delivering coils depending on the type of crane they have sometimes you have to thread the chains through the eye of the coil and then hook it back onto the crane so they can lift it off so the, the whole nature of the work has changed and of course I'm not on contracted hours anymore like that before I delivered on behalf of the haulage company and I was contracted to an electroplating factory so my hours were six until four and, and that was it if I hadn't delivered everything by four o'clock I just took it back because that's all what the company paid for the hire of the vehicle and the driver was 10 hours which was great because you always know when you're going to finish unless there's been traffic or something you always know what time you can be home now on this I'm not on contracted hours I'm on whatever time I'm asked to start which is usually around five or six sometimes it can be later sometimes you need to be there a little bit earlier and I'm on until I finish so I'm working now 10 11 12 13 hours there's a couple of times I've been even later than that like when I broke down or when there's been traffic but when you're going so far away compared to my class 2 job which was local work there's more chance of you getting held up in some kind of road accident or road closure where back on the class 2 it was totally different because I was local there and I was doing multi-drop work which I liked it's no skin off my nose as they say delivering to multiple places throughout the day I used to load up on the morning and maybe have 10 deliveries I was happy to stop at 10 different places during the day it didn't bother me where this is more driving there delivering what you have driving back swapping the trailer or collecting something on your way back it's a whole totally different thing and for me what you really need to think about if you want to do your class one license is the hours now that's the same for class two but i think on a class two the hours can be friendlier on the arctic because you're permitted to work 13 hours per day 15 hours twice a week most transport companies want you to fill your hours because they spend a lot of money getting these trucks and trailers and the sooner they earn that money back the better so they want to use you to your full hours so you can drive nine hours per day but you can work 13 hours per day so that includes all your loading and unloading time and so on I'm sure you guys already already know that but just in case you're new so yeah what you really need to consider is the hours me I was the happiest on my class 2 job now that's that's a hard pill for me to swallow to say that but it's true and I've realized it's not the size of the vehicle that is the problem 
that's causing my most frustrations it's not the fact that I have a trailer now instead of a whole rigid unit it's not really the nature of the work I've got used to doing the steel coils now and those things it's the hours it's working the longer hours and that's what bothers me now never knowing what time I'm gonna go home and that worries me for the future in terms of if me and my partner decided we wanted a family I feel like I'm lucky to say at the moment I don't have kids because if I did they would barely see me and the same with my partner he's also a HGV driver so things like that wouldn't work for us I mentioned in my other video, my last video, the same thing and that I was looking into other avenues of maybe becoming an instructor or a transport manager because I'm looking for a reduction in hours and I'm looking for something that would be more family friendly. I know transport managers can work longer hours but when you work in one place you can't be held up in traffic if that makes sense. Anyway, so being an instructor, you need to have held your HGV license for three years before you can be an instructor. Now I've held my class two for two years and I've held my class one for a few months. So I can't be an instructor. And I'm thinking to myself, I can't keep doing these long days, 12, 13 hours. It's starting to get to me now and I'm not enjoying it. And I know some of you out there, you're veterans, and like I admire you for it. You guys are amazing that work all these long hours. I know I've got one of you that messages me quite regularly. He's not going to mind me mentioning his name, but Al, Alan, he works crazy hours. And like you're amazing, you really are. And you can see he has a passion for the job, where me, I don't have a passion for driving a lorry. To me, it's just a job. I mean I like lorries but I want to go home at the end of the day <laughs> but you guys that do all these crazy hours I look up to you 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 really are the key workers and the ones that are keeping the country going you really are me on the other hand I like the day work and the sooner I can go home the better <laughs> I know that sounds such a dreadful way of putting it but that's the stage I've got to at the moment really so if you want to do your class one license you really need to think about the hours i personally have ordered a home study kit to get my transport manager certificate but i'm finding i don't have time to study by the time i finish work and got home i'm too tired i just have time to make some food prepare my sandwiches and things for the next day i don't have time for anything else and just recently with this other bereavement we've had in the family there's been a lot of things to sort out so again really limited on time and it's just starting to get to me at the moment I really miss my old job because it was so much simpler you started at six and you finished at four it was so much better for me knowing what time I'm gonna go home and then I can plan my day plan to do things or go out somewhere and now I just never know when I'm going to finish. I never know what I'm going to eat because I don't know how much time I'm going to have to cook. So yeah, you really need to think about the hours. You also need to think about if you like your own company. This job, it's a lonely job I suppose. You're, you're on your own most of the day in the truck. You don't see many people. At your delivery sites, most of the time, they ask you to stay in the cab. They don't want you walking around the yard and things. So you have to be able to be happy in your own company and you have to be able to entertain yourself. So whether it's watching something on a, a tablet or listening to some music, obviously watching something on your tablet when you're stopped on your break, I mean, or uh, when you're waiting to be unloaded, listening to your music while you're going along, podcasts or whatever is going to take your boredom. For me, driving four hours is the most boring thing. I just get so bored, I really do. And I've been lucky really that my transport manager has listened and he doesn't tend to give me those runs 
so that that's a good thing I can't say anything bad about the company that way um, they do listen to what you say but of course they can't choose where the deliveries have to go but you need to be able to entertain yourself if you're driving four and a half hours in one go what you're gonna do in that time are you okay just sitting on a motorway for hours or are you like me and you just get bored <laughs> for me I keep it up with the music talking on my hands free um, and listening to some podcasts I like listening to podcasts so that's fine with me but I do think it can get to you after a while just the isolation and being away from your family especially if you do nights out and things then you're really away from your family so in one sense I do regret getting my class 1 license but in another sense I don't because I always said that this would for me be a stepping stone to something better so I mean I like being a delivery driver if I could find a job that was local work not driving too far a day multi-drop work um, delivering things like stillages and, and whatnot like I'm used to or pallets I'd be happy with that or like today I'm enjoying doing this flatbed work because it gives me time to think about something of how I might strap the load I have to think about it where with the sliders they're usually already loaded for us and they're already secured so it's just something to think about and also there's no trouble opening one of the sliders on this because there's no roof anyway so it's, it can't get stuck so in some ways I regret it but in other ways I'm pleased because now I have the class 1 license and I have some experience the world is my oyster as they say I'll never be out of work because people are always going to need drivers with there being a shortage of course which is all over the news that's not a new thing there's always been a shortage of drivers particularly class 1 so that you'll always have work and I think it opens up new opportunities for you and, and the whole range of work you can do so there's all kinds of things from tankers I know you can get class 2 tankers but just saying tankers uh, flatbed work curtain siders sliders low loaders there's a whole range recovery or heavy recovery there's there's a whole range of things you can do and just having that bigger license gives you access to more of it I think it also helps in terms of if you did want to be a transport manager or something like that that's the route I wanted to follow and I'm still looking to get my transport manager CPC I'm hoping to um, be able to vlog that as well step by step how to do that and what's involved in the transport manager CPC course um, I was hoping to vlog that if that's something you guys would be interested in as well uh, but I'm not sure I think I'd miss the driving part if I could just find a job that was reasonable hours you know eight to ten hours a day would be absolutely perfect for me but I guess those jobs are hard to find especially with there being a shortage of drivers it's even worse because the people that are left are now working extra but yeah I'm happy I've got my license because if I did become a transport manager one day in many years to come at least I would have that experience that I've been out there on the road and I've done the job myself where I know a lot of managers don't even have a HGV license oh, so it would be nice to to have mine and say I've been out there and done it like my transport manager has you know when you ask him questions and when you ask for advice he knows because he's been there and done it before so that that's a good thing and also being an instructor 
it's good if you've been out on the road and got your experience because there's no actual law that says you need experience you can be an instructor if you've held your license for three years that doesn't mean you've been on the road for three years driving HGVs which doesn't make sense really but so in some ways I'm glad in some ways I'm not so glad I just miss my old job and I miss knowing what time I can expect to be finished. I also used to know what I had the next day. Now I'm finding out what I have the next day later on in the day. Uh, in my class two job, I knew what I had for the week, really. I knew a couple of days in advance what I had. And now I just don't know. And, and the thing as well with the Arctic is things change. So the other day I picked up a trailer to take to Swaddling Coat and I was given a piece of paper with it that said take the trailer to the depot when you're finished with it because it needs to go in for some some minor repair on it something to do with the roof it needed repairing or something I mean it was safe to be on the road but like I said it was a minor repair so of course there's my day changed again I have to do the delivery and then take the trailer to the depot and then come back it just adds time on things change in this in the arctic world where on my class two job things didn't change as much that was my day's work and then i arranged my deliveries in the order that i thought was best and did my job and that was it things didn't change very rarely where now things change all the time you never know what you're doing or where you're going or what's next so yeah just uh, my experiences with you guys and this YouTube channel is not a channel to promote HGV driving at all. This channel is my journey into becoming a HGV driver and my experiences and my opinions so that's what I'm sharing with you guys. It's just my opinion so far. I'm not the happiest that I've been. I was happier on my class 2 job. Some people have said to me, would I go back to teaching? No, I wouldn't go back to teaching. I like being a driver and I like, it. or I, at least I can deal with everything that goes with it. I can deal putting the chains on the coils. I can deal with the slider getting stuck, things like that. I can deal with tricky reverses. Doesn't mean I'm perfect at them, but I can deal with them. But what I'm really struggling is the hours. When I think back, I gave up teaching because it took up too much of my time at home. I used to get home from work and I still had a ton of work to do at home. So I gave it up because of the hours. It was taking over my life on my weekends. And I said I'd be happy just to get home from work and then forget about it. Well, I have my wish. I do get home and forget about it, but I just get home really late. And I don't have any time to do anything else. So for me, I don't like the hours. If there's an eight to 10 hour job out there on class one, I'd be happy to give it a go. But, I mean, that's the thing. If I did apply for another job, I'd probably try to find another class one job because I do like driving the Arctics. But I think the job I'm looking for is hard to find and maybe doesn't exist. Never mind. I have rambled enough so I'm going to swap my trailer now and head back to Willinor to unload it. Did hear something this morning about there being something wrong with that slider. It doesn't open because there's some wood in the way, the way they've loaded it. So I'm going to double check that first before I take it and then I shall be on my way back again for what the second time today and then I'll have to bring that trailer back. Anyway, catch up with you guys in a bit. Okay, I have took this slider back and it looks like my battery died before you saw me reversing in there, which is a shame, but still. I can say that I got in there perfectly and I didn't even need to go forward, well not even once. 
I'd be lying. <laughs> I, I had to go forward twice just to make sure. Because uh, you can't see across the trailer, so it gets me nervous. So I just pull out, go back in, and whatever. It's easier like that. Just to be safe than sorry, so they say. Anyway, let's turn that off while I'm talking to you. I'm on my way to take this trailer back now. I'm not sure what else is left, but I have had a warning light come up on here saying there's something wrong with the brake light. Um, I believe it's the brake light for the tractor unit because when I disconnected from the trailer earlier, the warning was still on. So I'm going to have to go to the mechanics and ask them if they can fix that for me. I used to have spare bulbs in my old truck. I don't have any in this one, so I'll have to go and ask them to help me. But yeah, just talking about the Class 1 licence and if you're thinking about getting it. I mean, I talked about the longer hours and the longer journeys and waiting times and things. It's not to mention the facilities. Sometimes, being a lady, it's not the best. Sometimes there isn't even a ladies toilet. The other day I was using the men's toilet in Swindon and I have to walk in there covering my eyes just in case there's anyone there standing on the urinal so I don't want to make anyone feel uncomfortable. Uh, so yeah sometimes the facilities aren't the best. The motorway services, the ones I've stopped at, seem to be okay but sometimes you just struggle to find a space to park. And I've been close to my driving time and even gone over my driving time sometimes because I can't find anywhere to park. All the lay-bys that I'm thinking of are all full, so, and that's just during the day, let alone somewhere to park at night. That's a whole different story. Uh, but, yeah, sometimes the facilities aren't the best and the only food that's offered really at motorway service stations predominantly is fast food but there's nothing stopping you packing your own is there really and cooking your own meals but there's the facilities what annoys me about motorway services they just stink of we I mentioned this in another video I was actually talking to one of the motorway service cleaners she was telling me all these horror stories but they just stink because some of the drivers are too lazy to walk to the toilet and they just decide to do it in the car park which is wonderful when you open the door and get a smell of it but yeah so the hours are long it can be lonely I mentioned that in another video as well and I said I was feeling a bit lonely and a bit isolated to begin with but um, I've started to get to know some of the other drivers that work at different companies that deliver steel and when they see you on the road they flash the lights and wave at you so there seems to be a bit of a steel community or a slider community going on and I've bumped into a few drivers that have recognised me from YouTube and been talking to me as well the amount of people that have recognised me now is unreal I've even had people older drivers come up and tell me that they've come back into driving and they've found my tutorial on uh, tachograph cards so even not just new drivers finding me even people who've been in the game a while so yeah that, it's absolutely crazy how many people have recognized me I know one who watches my videos works at a, a well-known steel place and I'd gone on there and they told me which door I had to find so I went and found the door and as I was walking down the yard I heard Hiya Hayley! And I looked and I thought oh someone must be another driver that I know. No it was the crane operator. So hello to you, you should know who you are. If we just say CB you'll know who you are. But yeah nice to meet you too. <laughs> the amount of people that have recognised me is unreal. Uh, so. That's pretty cool anyway. It's nice to meet you guys in person and say hi and wave to you and things. But yeah, this it's it can be lonely, but I think if you see the same drivers then you can build a bit of a community and the most helpful people out there are other drivers. I found that the people that help you when you're struggling tend to be other drivers. 
for me anyway, I don't know whether that's just because the drivers I've come across, maybe uh, that's not the same for everyone. Some like to laugh at you and take the mic. Anyway, uh, so there's parking, long hours, sometimes the facilities aren't the best. You're just not treated. Drivers aren't treated as like an important member of society. You're expected to use horrible facilities and things. It's not really a respected profession. You're just treated like an animal really. But I guess some drivers behave like animals. Like being too lazy to walk to the toilet and the services. Of course these are just my opinions. The biggest thing you'll have to overcome if you do get your class one license is not passing your test. It's your first time in the Arctic when you're trying to reverse somewhere and you just don't know what you're doing or how to do it. Once you've overcome that, then you'll be fine. <laughs> it's no wonder there's a shortage of drivers. It's not a family friendly job. That is it then. Ooh. I am going to be the rose between two thorns now. And part between two tractor units. That is it for the day. It's an unusual day today. Because it's... four o'clock and I'm finished which is weird <laughs> so in the whole video I've talked about how I don't like the longer hours and here I am doing my ten you win some you lose some right then today 94.2 kilometers just backwards and forwards all day and they didn't have anything else for me to do over in Dudley so that makes it nice for me today there we go then anyway of course if you like my videos you can give me a thumbs up and if you want to stay tuned with me and my adventures then you can subscribe otherwise I will see you in the next one